Right. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to SheBurst Podcast. Today's guest is Tammy Tammy Uliendo. Hi, Tammy. Hi. Thanks for having me. Welcome to our podcast. Thank you for coming on. So can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? I am an anesthesiologist at the University of Florida in Gainesville. So uh, North Central Florida, go Gators. <laughs> and um, so I teach and I um, do some research and I take care of patients, mostly obstetric patients. That's my subspecialty. And then uh, about six or seven years ago, I decided to branch out and I went to part time. And now I spend the rest of my time in my encore career as a mystery thriller author. Nice. That's amazing. So when did you first realize you wanted to be an author? I, I, you know, I've been asked that question a few times, and I don't actually know. If I look back, my parents recently gave me a box of my childhood memories, and I had some fairly lengthy stories in there for a six-year-old. Um, <laughs> I don't think those count. Probably, um, I wanted to write nonfiction, and and we wrote a, a my mentor and I wrote a textbook of anesthesia for introductory sort of topics. And then we finished that and he said, why don't we write something else together? And his idea was for us to write a, a book and I'd always loved mysteries. So we started writing a mystery and he fell ill and passed away, but somewhere in there I got the bug and I didn't want to stop. So I started <laughs> a different book and that's, the, that's Fatal Intent. And I've written a couple others that I'm still waiting to get published. Oh, nice. That's really yeah. good. That's really, really good. So where did you get your idea? ideas from when you thought of your book, Fatal Intent? Mostly it came from a, a long-standing sort of concern over how we should deal with end-of-life issues when people are unable to make decisions for themselves. Um, you know, it comes up a lot when you're a medical student and a resident and less so in anesthesia, but I certainly am part of the conversations with some of our patients. And uh, it had always sort of bothered me. I, back in grade school was when uh, the Karen Ann Quinlan stuff was going on with uh, family fighting over whether to remove a feeding tube. And I remember I was in a debate for that. I don't remember which side I took, but, um, <laughs> but it's just always fascinated me. Not that I have an answer for it, but <laughs> I, I uh, so in Fatal Intent, that issue comes up and I, try to have characters on every side of the issue and, and let them have uh, sort of cogent arguments every direction. And, um, and then it brings in some, some other issues. So it's primarily based on experiences in my, in my career as a physician. Oh, nice. Wow. Um, I do have another question. What inspired you to write your book, uh, Fatal Intent? Um, well, part of it was just this desire to keep writing after after Dr. Gravenstein passed away, and then uh, and then this long-standing interest in in, in end-of-life issues. But um, but once I sort of came up with the character, you know, you sort of start with a character that's modeled after yourself, and pretty soon she developed her own personality, which was just bizarre because it had to come from me, and yet she would say things in my head that I hadn't thought of yet. So. Um, <laughs> So I sort of fell in love with her and, and then I made up some companions for her and they all sort of took up residence in my life as fictitious people who had comments to say on my actual life, which is sounds a little psycho, but um, people had told me that would happen and I didn't believe them and they were right. So so it's been really fun. It was It's really fun now as people read it and they talk to me about their perceptions of my characters. And then also, as I wrote this, the sequel, um, having them pursue relationships. And it was, it's just really, really fun creating your own world and your own people and having them interact in realistic, but, uh, but awesomer ways than real life, probably. Ah, my dog is distracting you a little bit. That's okay. <laughs> she started barking. Bark I don't know what she's barking at. <laughs> Carla. Uh, so what do your family and friends think of your writing? Um, everybody's been really supportive. Uh, my parents have been just amazing. They want to read everything I write, and it's always the next Pulitzer Prize winning short story. Um, <laughs> and uh, my husband has not much of a reader, but he's been very supportive of me going back to part time and taking a lot of time and 
it's not an in a, it it's not wow. inexpensive to become an author if uh, if you want to wow. take the courses and things like that and do some okay. traveling. Um, my kids have all been great. They've read the books and given wow. me comments, and it's just I've been very very blessed. And then I met some other writer friends early on within the first year that I started writing, and they've become my little cheering group. We're, we're mutual, mutual cheerleaders of each other's writing. And we get together once a year. We're from all over the country. And we um, talk once a month or so about our writing and the victories and the not victories. And uh, it's really, really an amazing group of, of people when you meet writers. They're so different from physicians. <laughs> not that physicians aren't wonderful too, but in a different way. Like as soon as I started interviewing authors and adding more authors on my Facebook, like I'm realizing how supportive they really are. Like they're not in competition with either each other. Right. They always there to help you. Like they give you advice. They help you. They connect you with people sometimes. And I'm like, wow, this is an amazing group of friends I got. Like uh, I consider it, them all friends now. <laughs> yeah, it really is. I went to this meeting called Thriller Fest, which is in New York City every July, except wow. virtual this year. Wow. And I met all the big name, you know, Lee Child and Tess Gerritsen and all those people. And uh, and then they offered to blurb my book. So I sent them all advanced copies and now I've got quotes from all of them on the back cover. So, you know, it's just such kind people that are, you know, interested in uh, helping more people get into the field because the more books you have that are well-written and fun to read, the more people that read. So, so it helps everybody. That's true. Wow. So can you give our listeners like a brief summary of your book, Fatal Intent? So it's focused on an anesthesiologist, of course, <laughs> named Dr. Kate Downey. She's a little younger than I am. Um, and her husband was is in a persistent vegetative state, so like a coma after a, a IED explosion over in the Middle East. And um, and she's dealing with that, trying to deal with whether he's going to wake up or not. Um, and meanwhile, some patients of hers start dying a couple days after surgery, which she just falls upon by random chance. She learns of those deaths because we don't really follow patients past when we discharge them from the hospital. But she finds out about this and and. Um, gets curious about it. And for some reason, she's the only one interested. And so she pursues trying to find out why these patients are dying. And uh, her Aunt Erm, who comes from my mentor, she's a, uh, a German elderly woman who uh, doesn't quite have a handle of English in amusing ways. And she uh, is sort of a sidekick helping Kate try to figure out why these patients are dying. And uh, it gets a little heated over time when the, the person who's directing this is not so crazy about her investigation. Oh, nice. Wow. So um, who are a few of your favorite authors and have any of them inspired your novel, Fatal Intent? I love Lee Child and uh, read, I've read all of his stuff. Harlan Coben, I think is amazing. Um, and uh, I, I have, my writing style probably models both of them the most. Um, Louise Penny, I absolutely adore. She writes a series of uh, police procedural sort of stuff up in Three Pines up in Canada. And it's just beautiful characters and scenery. And I would love to write like her, but I can't. Um, but anything you read sort of inspires your writing. I wish I could read more for craft, but I just get so sucked into every story that I... 10 pages later go, oh man, I forgot to pay attention to how they were describing things. <laughs> um, but those are, um, and then of course, Tess Gerritsen and Kathy Reichs who write more medical stuff like like what I write, Michael Crichton. Um, yeah, there's, there's just so many. And uh, I like variety. I try to read it in other genres as well, but, uh, but the mysteries and thrillers are what really keep me, keep me reading. Oh, nice. So this is one of my questions outside of the questions I was going to ask you. But are you working on anything new? Like, do you have any new novels coming out or anything? Yeah, I just finished the sequel to Fatal Intent. It's with the publisher now and they are reading it and they'll let me know whether they like <laughs> it or not and what I need to change. Um, and then I have another book that I really want to get published, but um, it's not really what Ocean View wants to publish. It's um. 
a few years in the future when there's been um, a, a plague, unfortunately, I wrote it long before COVID, but there was a plague. Um, and the net effect of that was it killed off all children under the age of three and made everyone infertile. So there's been no children for a decade. And it's the story of a research scientist who finds the cure and, uh, and it brings up interesting issues about if women, instead of choosing not to have babies, chose to have babies, how do you, how do you make that work? How do you regulate it? Do you regulate it? Um, but if it's, if you're required to take a treatment to get pregnant, how does that change the dynamics of society, um, the world over? So it's, uh, Again, I don't have the right answers. There, okay. I don't know that there are right answers, but I just love bringing up all different perspectives and, and leaving it up to the reader what they think the right answer is. Wow. And it, it works like well for book clubs because they can, you know, okay. talk about controversial <laughs> issues like end of life. And yeah, it's yeah. very fun. Definitely. That sounds like um, you should write that as a screenplay or something like as a screenplay to make it a TV show. Because it kind of sounds like this TV show I was watching is called Between. And all of the people over the age of 22 died. Like, oh they my. were all dying. Yeah. And it's one small town. So they quarantined the town and wouldn't let them leave. So it, that, it sounds just like that. I, I would read it <laughs> if you wrote it. Well, hopefully it'll get published. It's done. It's just, uh, I'm still trying to find an agent. And uh, that's a very long road that I had no idea how much there was to it. But Wow. So what advice would you give to help others who want to pursue a writing career? Wow. Um, <laughs> read a lot. Um, do uh, as many courses as you can afford, but much better to do those in person where they actually give you direct feedback on your writing as opposed to just online, you know, webcasts or whatever. Um, find other people who are writing in your genre that you can exchange works with and talk about it. Um, but reading about craft is really, really important to get good at this. Ah, okay. I'm definitely going to take that advice because I want to write my first novel. But Oh, um, good for you. <laughs> what do you enjoy doing when you're not reading or writing? We love to hike. Um, we love to play with my dogs. Um, <laughs> my husband and I play some sports and uh, get outside. Mostly just being outside is our, is our favorite thing when I'm not reading. Ah, that's awesome. I want to thank you so much, Tammy, for coming on my show today and speaking with me about your book. Well, thanks for having me. It's fun. <laughs> you have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for listening to my podcast episode interview with Tammy. If you would like to purchase her book or find out any uh, info about her, that's all you have to do is go to our website. I've linked it below. I've also linked it to the event so you can view her website. I want to thank you all so much for your support. and. Make great choices. Have a great day.